Hi, this is Laura Gable. I am a school psychologist with Cleveland Schools, and I am here with my intern, Amanda Bryan. Amanda? Hi, everyone. I'm Amanda Bryan. I'm a third year student at Cleveland State University, and I'm currently an intern at Cleveland Schools this year. And we are here to respond to the challenge from Dr. Chuck Archer on the NASP PUSH project. We are going to talk to you today about the NASP practice model. Um, it's one of four of the components that NASP revises every 10 years. Um, the other ones are the principles for professional ethics, the graduate preparation for school psychologists, and the credentialing of uh, school psychologists. So this section talks about our practice model. And Amanda and I are going to go over the different areas for you. Um, why does NASP have this practice model? Really, there's a couple reasons why. Because we know that training matters, that the better our students and our practitioners are trained, the better quality school psychological services are going to be provided to folks. Um, we also know that context matters, that the systems that we work in and the um, the areas that we're in all help us see how we can provide good services for students as well as ratios matter and in this in this model we have the ratio of one to 500 um, so that's very exciting for um, for all of us as school psychologists um, so amanda i'm going to let you go ahead and um and start the presentation Sure. So we're going to start with our first section, which is practices that permeate all services. And that includes domain one, database decision making, and domain two, consultation and collaboration. Thank you. So domain one, the database decision making. Um, in this domain, school psychologists are required to know a variety of models of assessment and data collection. Um, they use these models to identify strengths and needs, develop services, and measure progress and outcomes. In our second domain, consultation and collaboration, school psychologists know ways to consult, collaborate, and communicate with individuals, families, groups, and systems. This helps promote effective implementation of services. All right, now we're gonna to transition to direct services at the student level. This entails domain three, academic interventions and instructional supports, and domain four, mental and behavior health services and interventions. In domain three, academic interventions and instructional supports, school psychologists use assessment and data to implement and evaluate services that support academics. School psychologists understand the influences of biological, cultural, and social influences on academics. In domain four, mental health and behavioral health services and interventions, school psychologists design, implement, and evaluate services that promote resilience and positive behaviors. They support socialization and adaptive skills. School psychologists understand the impact of behavior on learning and promote evidence-based social emotional strategies. And now we're going to shift to indirect services at the systems level. And this encompasses domain five, school-wide practices to promote learning, Domain six, services to promote safe and supportive schools. And domain seven, family, school, and community collaboration. Thank you. In domain five, school-wide practices to promote learning, school psychologists develop and implement strategies to maintain safe, supportive learning environments. They know about evidence-based practices that promote learning and positive behavior. Looking at domain six, services to promote safe and supportive schools, school psychologists know about physical and psychological safety. They implement crisis prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery. 
this is where all that prepared training is located from NASP. Um, in this area, school psychologists know about resilience and risk factors, and they're aware of services available in schools and communities that support prevention and health. School psychologists know about strategies for creating safe schools. Next, in domain seven, family, school, and community collaboration, we have school psychologists keeping culture and context in mind when designing and evaluating services. School psychologists help schools, families, and community agencies work to enhance academic and behavior for students. And finally, we'll be talking about foundations of service delivery, which includes domain eight, equitable practices for diverse student populations, domain nine, research and evidence-based practice, and domain 10, legal, ethical, and professional practice. In domain eight, equitable practices for diverse student populations, school psychologists address potential influences related to diversity when implementing strategies in general and special education. School psychologists are advocates for social justice and equity and remove barriers to ensure that each child receives what they need. In domain nine, research and evidence-based practice, school psychologists evaluate and apply research as a foundation for service delivery. They use different resources and, technolo and technologies for data analysis and measurement to help support effective practices for students, groups, and systems. And finally, in domain 10, legal, ethical, and professional practice, school psychologists apply characteristics needed for effective work practice. Characteristics include responsibility, adaptability, initiative, technological competence, advocacy, and commitment to social justice and equity. So that goes over the 10 domains. Then finally, on the outside circle, we have information about organizational principles. Um, and that kind of goes over a, a broad systems approach of the things that we school psychologists need to function effect effectively in schools and districts. Um, the principles include organization and evaluation of service delivery, climate, physical, personal, and fiscal support systems, professional communication, supervision, peer consultation and mentoring, and then finally, professional development and recognition systems. Now, Amanda's gonna talk a little bit about the NASP PUSH project for us. Amanda? Sure, so NASP has provided us with three simple suggestions and recommendations to help promote the new practice model. Their first suggestion is to hang a poster in your office or workplace. For example, if you're working from home, you can place a poster behind you where those on your Zoom or Teams calls can see it. Another suggestion is to take a picture with the poster and post it to social media using the hashtags NASPPMPush and It's What We Do, both all one word. Finally, have your own presentations with your schools and key stakeholders. NASP also has some additional resources that can be sent to others as well. And you can find more of this information on www.nasponline.org slash pmpushproject. Thank you, Amanda. And we are making this video available to you. Please feel free to use it with other school psychologists and with your districts um, to be able to share information about this NASP PUSH project. You know, guys, um, this is a unique time in school psychology. 
we have a, a chance to, to have things opened up and to be able to create a new future in what we want to see for school psychology. And I think this NAS practice model 2020 is going to help us do it. Um, for Amanda Bryan and Laura Gable, we say thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, all.